And in this video, we're gonna be talking about something that every photographer has. Every professional photographer, every amateur photographer, every serious photographer, just about every camera bag has one. And what is it? It's a flash. And what we're gonna be talking about is this Canon 600 EXRT. And what's missing from this flash? What makes this flash like any other flash? Why is this flash not that special? And why does this flash cost $600? No flash should cost $600 because basically all flashes function the same. They, they almost have the same amount of power. You know, some of them have better capacitors, a little better recycling time, and that's about it. But really no flash should cost this kind of money. Okay, this flash definitely uh, holds up to the challenge of shooting uh, weddings because mainly wedding photographers use flashes and uh, like photojournalists, sports photographers, you know, sometimes uh, on location, uh, portrait photographers will use flash, but mainly like this flash is all photography is geared towards wedding photographers because that's the majority of photographers that are out there. I mean, they go through equipment, they take thousands and thousands of pictures with their cameras, with their flashes, and their gear breaks down. And this is one of those uh, pieces of equipment that uh, any photographer will use and get a long shelf life out of it. It's not gonna really break, it's well made, it's heavy duty, and uh, it's over 600 bucks. Now this is the uh, RT1, there's an RT2 out, but they're, they're virtually the same. So I really wouldn't recommend anybody running out getting the two over this flash, because you can pick this up used on uh, the internet. And I'm gonna have a link below uh, where you can find this flash new and used and you're gonna see a big difference in price from the RT to the RT2 uh, new and used so the other flash that I'm going to introduce to you is the METS uh, 58 AF1 now the AF2 is out now this flash cost half the price of this and believe me both of these flashes can hold up to the best of them. Now, I've never used this on location heavily. I've used this maybe on one or two jobs. I did use this METS on hundreds of jobs, took thousands of pictures with these METS flashes, and I've only had one blow up on me. Um, I don't know if it was my fault or the camera wasn't reading correctly. It, it gave a wrong, the camera was messed up and gave the flash a wrong single and the head just, like I was taking a picture of the bride and groom and the head just blew up. I was like, wow. Luckily I had my backup camera and a backup flash and I was able to complete the job and we moved on because both camera and flash were down for the night. I had to send the flash out to Canon to had them recalibrate it and fix it because it was off. You know, the autofocus was off, everything was off in the camera. Luckily, I didn't burn the camera out and it's still functioning. And uh, I still have that flash, I saved it for parts because I have three of these. The other one, the hot shoe broke and I'm gonna take the hot shoe off that other flash that the head blew up and put it on the, uh, on the, on the flash that the hot shoe actually cracked. So you can see both flashes are pretty much uh, the same size. The Canon flash is a little heftier in uh, length, height, the width is almost the same. And they're virtually almost the same flashes. I mean, they, they both function the same. The, the Canon flash, you know, has Uh, much more um, controls. You have this dial, you have the lock uh, feature that locks in whatever you lock in, whatever you dial in, it has the on. You know, there's, a, there's more buttons here. So what you're paying for is more electronics in the flash. What's the one thing that's really nice about this flash is the quick release feature. You have this here, you just put it on your camera or wherever on your light stand, flip that, closed, and this thing ain't coming off. You don't have to use that 
wheel to lock it down unhook it this comes right off this has a metal hot shoe now metal hot shoe has its plus and its minuses yes it's a lot stronger but if you have this directly mounted on a camera um, and you drop it uh, I'm not sure if this part breaks off completely or it can't technically break your camera or break the flash altogether you know where the Mets flash as you can see has a met as a plastic hot shoe and if this does if you have this on your camera and it does fall you're gonna break this plastic off and then you just take these four screws out you call Mets they send you a new one or you buy one that's used and it has you know and you could replace it uh, and like you know get a used one and use it for parts so now you know both of these cameras are um, ETTL auto manual uh, they have auto thyristor feature meaning that um, you see these holes here so these holes what they allow you to do is put this put this flash on manual and what will happen is the flash itself will determine the light the amount of light that's on your subject and it'll shut off but it, it, it'll read it through the uh, camera settings you have inside your camera so for instance if you if you set your camera to let's say like f8 uh, at a 60th of a second it'll give you that much light depending on uh, the colors that your um, subject is. Let's say it's where your subject is white or has dark skin, light skin, dark clothes, light clothes. It, it'll all take that into consideration. You know, both of these flashes have flash compensation um, and they work. You can see the Mets flash has four buttons, very, very uh, minimal uh, functions in it because you don't really need all the functions that's in this flash. Both of these flashes can talk to another flash. So you could set this flash to the master and set this and set another flash to slave. I think this one you can trigger four flashes. This one, I'm not sure if you could trigger up to four or two, but you know, with, with this flash, you have an advantage that this flash don't. You know, they both take batteries, you know, easy to load, two up, two down. You know, this one is straight. This one is, is like in, a, in a, a square pattern. You know, they're both made out of plastic. Uh, it has the infrared autofocus uh, assist beam. They both take uh, battery packs with these here. You could put SIM cords on here. And you could use these exactly the same. They both have uh, tilt and swivel heads. You could put it all the way around. You could bounce forward swivel like that it has uh, both of them have wide angle diffusers uh, bounce cards so the Mets the, the can is the same thing the can of feels a little more easy to, to turn you know you so you could do 360 it has the you know wide angle filter bounce card and they both uh, have a zoom heads right so both of these zoom heads can zoom to like uh, 200 I think it's from 28 to 200 maybe the the two has a wider uh, head on it but uh, that's one of the other features that you have on maybe the two you know they're both durable flashes but you know this flash the Canon flash cost over six hundred dollars. The Mets flash cost maybe three hundred used. They're about the same price, and uh, you know my recommendation is that if you were a, a beginner photographer, I would get the Mets flash. I wouldn't buy this flash. I would get this flash. I'm gonna explain it to you why. So if you look at so if you look at both of these flashes, so take a good look at them. And tell me what's missing on the Canon flash. Right. It's a light. So this Mets flash is a dual light. This is a single light. So you could actually double light with this Mets flash that you can't double light with this Canon flash. You would need two lights. 
So what would happen is when you're using these two lights, you have to really tune down, turn down the power on this uh, master flash and then on the slave, you could use that as your key light. And um, it just makes your photography uh, a lot diff more difficult if you're shooting by yourself, if you're on location, if you're in a rush, if you press for time, you know, double lighting with two lights just kills your time. Where double lighting with this flash is so much easier. And, I'm, I, and let me show you why. Both of these flashes, you know, are professional flashes, right? But this flash, the Mets versus the Canon has two lights, as you could see. So this is, this is a fill light, this is a main light, right? Now here we have the, the Canon, it only has a main light. So you have to really work this in order to get proper exposure. So what happens is this, a lot of professional photographers rely on this flash shooting this way. You're gonna put that up. Now you can't really put the wide angle diffuser on if you're shooting like this, because this is gonna kill maybe a stop of light. This is only if you're shooting like that, you wanna have a wide spread of light. You're far back enough where you're not gonna blow your subjects out and you need a wider angle, a wider throw of light. So that's what you're gonna use this for. You know, unless you wanna do a little diffusion in light, you can use that. But mainly what a lot of photographers do is they'll put the head like that and shoot it like this all day long. So what they're doing is they're shooting this light up in the ceiling and then the camera is opening up, right? You're going to get like F4, F2.8, F4, uh, you know, you're going to have to be at least 400, uh, 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 ISO 400, um, your camera is going to need a lot more light to let into the lens when you're shooting like this. So you're going to open up, you're going to have shorter, show, slutter, show, slower shutter speeds because you're throwing this light up in the ceiling. Now, you don't want to throw it straight up, right? So sometimes you want to bounce it a little bit. So now you want this light to hit the ceiling, come all the way around, take a little bit of this and hit your subject. So really, you know, so what you're going to, what's going to result is you're going to get like an orangey hue um, on your subject. You're not going to get a nice, clean light. And that's why a lot of these guys are like, oh, you got to shoot uh, raw. You have, because, you know, you have to color correct almost every single shot because you're not lighting your subject. All you're doing is you're using the ambient light in the room and this light is giving you a little light because the light is coming down on the subject. You're not hitting your subject like, what it, like you know, I had my softbox, it's hitting me, right? You're not really hitting your subject with direct light. I mean, if you were to use this like this, you would have to power this down to like, let's say, uh, you know, half power, quarter power, that's about it. I mean, or you have to really go into your camera or in here and use a, you know, the exposure, the flash compensation and, and, and go to like one, you know, minus one, because this thing is powerful. So is this. I mean, if I hit you directly with this, you know, you're going to get blown out. I mean, this thing is going to really uh, throw a lot, a lot of light. And then with the camera on uh, automatic, e even in manual, you're gonna get like a dark background. So you kind of want, that's why these guys pick this up because you wanna light the room, you want, you want everything to come out, right? Especially like if you're doing bokeh, you need some light in the background to bring up that bokeh. You can't have like a dark bokeh because it's not gonna look nice. You have to balance the light. And with one of these, you know, you gotta have, you're gonna have to do a lot of uh, color correcting at the end of the shoot because you only have one light. Now you could, you can technically, you know, put this on your camera, blow down the power and have a second light lighting the room. You know, now you got two lights, double the batteries, especially if you're by yourself and you're doing like a three hour job. Who has time for that? You know, in three hours, 
you, even a one hour job, I've shot one hour jobs. You're expected to shoot an album in an hour, in three hours. You're not going out there and shooting a couple of pictures. You gotta, you gotta shoot to print an album in one hour and three hours. That's what you, that's the, your goal. So when you go out on a wedding, your goal is to to shoot for an album because that's what you're selling. You're selling wedding albums. So you gotta give the bride and the groom enough shots so they can print an album in one hour, three hours, two hours, whatever the job is, four hours, whatever. I love doing three hour jobs. You know, you can go in there, you could make $900 and I have on a three hour job, bang it out, you got the whole day to yourself. Sometimes, if you're lucky enough, photographers aren't that lucky to be able to book two jobs in one day, like DJs, you know, DJ could do an afternoon, a morning job, uh, a close afternoon job and a night job. So, but a photographer, it's very hard to get like a morning job and then go do a evening job uh, wedding. You know, maybe a party, maybe, but it, it's tough because of all the time frames that's involved in shooting weddings. And the same goes for videographers. So like with this flash, I mean, you can shoot a nice job, you know, but you really have to, you know, dial in your exposures and you're gonna have to do a lot of post-production work. So now let's take a look at the Mets. So now with the Mets flash, you have this light here, okay? So for instance, if you're shooting the bride, you know, you know, you know when you shoot the bride, you gotta do full lengths, train out, uh, train in, all, all kinds of shots, uh, three quarter, head shots, veil on, veil off, all kinds of different shots, right? So what you're doing with this flash is, this flash is like the same amount of this, I think this is like, uh, has, uh, it's like 182 watt seconds, this may be like 200 watt seconds, these are powerful. You know, these are like guide number 100. These are pretty strong flashes. And, and they recycle almost the same. So now you're by yourself because I'm talking shooting by yourself. Now, if you have an assistant and you have this flash, the assistant can hold the light for you and you just tell the system where you want to point the light. And once your assistant knows what you want to do, the assistant is just going to do it automatically. You know, they're going to like do what their job is when they know what shot you're taking. They're gonna know like, put the light in the back, put the light in the front, hit the ceiling, all, all, kind, hit the, all kinds of stuff, right? So if you're by yourself with this light, you could bounce this light like that, full power, and now you, this, this light is pointing at your subject. So now this light is gonna bounce all around the room and this light is gonna hit your subject. Now you can, in this camera, reduce the power of this by four stops of whatever this light is. Now this light is good up to maybe 10, 15 feet and ISO 400. That's a lot, that's all you need is 10, 15 feet, right? So when you have the bride in the bed, when you have the bride full length, she's in the house, you're gonna get beautiful ambient light and you're gonna light her up. I'm telling you, you're gonna go home, take the JPEGs, the raw files right out of camera and print because they're gonna look perfect. Because once you tune this in, like let's say you, sh you, you shoot, man, you, you, you could set your camera on program, you know, aperture priority or manual, and, and this light is gonna just do wonders for you. You know, so like if you shoot in program and you have this light, all you have to do is, is select your exposure compensation and you're gonna get great shots. Now, usually like when you're indoors, you wanna shoot at a 30th of a second and that'll bring up the ambient light in the room. You don't wanna shoot at a 60th, you don't wanna shoot at 125th because you're gonna bring down the ambient light and the, the subject is gonna look over a little bright. So at a 30th of a second, if you can, even at a 15th of a second and you get everything in, this light is gonna light your subject, two subject, three people inside the house. This thing works fantastic because when you're in the house, you only have 10 feet. You know, you're gonna have your zoom lens on like the 70 to 200, that's your portrait lens or the uh, 17 to uh, 28 or the, 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 the 16 to 28. You could use that if you're in a really tight corner. That's a beautiful lens and any, any manufacturer, Nikon, Canon, even Sony. 
But I don't think they make this lens for Sony. I think they make it only for Canon and Nikon. They might, you could check. There's gonna be a link description below to find this Metz 58A. So really, what's missing on this, on this Canon flash? What's missing is the second light. Now Canon, Metz has been making a dual light flash forever before Canon was even used in wedding photography. Canon became popular in wedding photography when they came, when, when the business, when the industry went digital. Before digital, nobody used uh, Canons. Only amateurs used uh, Nikons and Canons to shoot weddings. You know, you could have, but it, it wasn't the same thing. You didn't have that uh, 500th of a second. You had, you know, not in the digital format cameras, you know, with autofocus had the 250th of a second uh, sync speed, they all had 125th, a 60th. So they were kind of lacking, you know, you didn't have, you know, high speed flashes either. But Matt's during the film days was king because you had a head that you could light the whole room and then you had this fill light that you lit all your subjects and you did all your portrait shots and they all came out perfect. I mean, there was barely any color correcting uh, needed to be done with this double light, you know, versus a flash like this. I mean, a lot, I mean, I used to use the Vivitar 283 with the bare bulb head. I had, I was looking for it to show you guys. I just couldn't find it. And, uh, and I didn't really need the double light, you know, but it, it would have been nice if I used this. And I, I used to like, even when I had, when I was shooting my Lumidines, I would double light. But like, if you guys are looking for a flash uh, to do candid photography, even wedding photography, and you know, you're thinking about spending over $600 on this, buy this flash. You know, if anything, rent it, try it out, see what it can do. And you're gonna say to yourself, wow, I'm glad I watched that video because this is the best flash out. You know, and Mets should really step up their game and compete with this flash. And Canon, I mean, come on. We don't need to see your name here. We need a light that can double light our subjects and this flash can handle it. This, this is a very good flash. I mean, look at the size of that head. You know, if that thing had a, another light here, this would be the best flash out. And no other professional camera has it like sony they don't have any flashes or even nikon with their perfect they don't do it i mean like what are they waiting for this flash has been out forever this system has been out forever there are even like cheaper brands that have this uh double light system i think it's pro master i mean i wouldn't use one of them in uh a professional setting even like those cheap korean flashes the the gandu doesn't have that you know a, a a second flash fill flash like this you know because if you're outside and you have you know like you see a little cat eyes in people or there's really hard shadows you know you don't want to light them like that you could just pick up this head this light will go anywhere this light will be one to one and boom the shadows and everything in your light will be balanced Beautiful. You won't have any 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 shadows or anything like that. And and you're gonna actually take less pictures because you know with this, you're gonna get a lot of blown out shots. You're gonna have to make a lot of adjustments to get the right shot. Because you can't just shoot and get like an orange hue and say, oh, I'm gonna go in and, and fix it in Lightroom or anything like that. The best way to shoot is to shoot perfect or as close as perfect as you can out of the camera because those pictures that are not as corrected are gonna be the best quality. Then a picture that you're constantly correcting and you have to shoot raw because of uh, you know all the color correcting you have to do. You don't have to do it this, you can shoot JPEGs. And believe me, if you got a camera that shoots 36 megapixels and you have a 22 megapixel full JPEG, that's plenty. My first Canon camera was four megapixels, <laughs> four. Okay, that was the 1D. That was the first full frame Canon ad. It was the 1D and it was four megapixels. Now people say, you know, 12 megapixels isn't enough, 15 megapixels isn't enough. You know, you have to shoot raw, you don't. Know, because if four megapixels was enough back in the day, so 20 megapixels, 22 megapixel JPEG 
is plenty because it's better than the 20Ds and all those cameras back in the day that people were shooting raw in order to get the best quality out of them. So these are the two flashes, they're both equal in power. This one's a little lighter, this one's a little heavier. They, they both do the same thing, they swivel, they tilt. You know, the Canon looks a little more durable. It is Canon, it has a better name. You know, people think like, oh, I should get the same Canon, the same flash for the manufacturer. But, you know, you're getting one light versus two lights. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, if you don't have the budget, get the ProMaster. You could probably pick one of those up for like 50 bucks online. And I'll put a description below, even for the ProMaster. So what I'm gonna do is, this is part one, I'm gonna do part two. I'm gonna uh, get a bride, put her in a bridal dress, and shoot with the heads up with both of these flashes, and you're gonna see the difference that this uh, little light here makes versus the Canon. And this is Johnny Avanti. I wanna thank everybody for watching the video. Don't forget to hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And peace out, and stay tuned for part two. Thank you very much.